general kind of overall thought of First Timothy, but also of First Timothy five more specifically. But Timothy, speaking of you know work in a church, unsound doctrine in the church, the guidance for the congregation of the church, talks about deacons, deacons, um, and um, then the ministers, young ministers, walk of a minister. And then we got um, chapter 5. I was just kind of glancing for something. Uh, it was in the chapter I just read, which was this one, chapter 5. It says, uh, lay hands on uh, no man suddenly. It's talking about you know, like young teachers and ministers. You know, you don't want to accept them into, well, as good teachers, because they've really not been taught of the Lord. You know, just as it says here that, you know, if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home and to requite their parents. Show piety at home. That's what, like, a young preacher should do also. You know, should be just quiet before the Lord and just hear the teaching of those who've, who've been taught of the Lord. And then as they grow and mature in the Lord, then they can be teachers. So, um, well, anyway, so the point is, I'm saying that the whole book is pretty much talking about the church. Some folks, this is why I'm making this video, some folks will take this one verse and use it in, in a wrong way. Let's see, I'm trying to find it. Um... Let him be worse than an infidel. Okay. Okay, right there. Verse 8. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Okay, I've had this one laid at my feet before. I'm not the main breadwinner in my home. I'll say that right up front. But I do provide for my own spiritually. And I also, I do work, and I get good jobs every now and then <laughs> so it's not like okay but anyways people will say you know see this this means you're supposed to have a job you know this means you're supposed to be a nine to fiver and you gotta be a man of the house and you gotta you know nonsense that's not what this is talking about this is talking about widows look how the chapter starts Okay, we're pretty much down here. Honor widows that are widows indeed, but if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home and to requite for their parents, for that is good and acceptable before God. Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate trusteth in God and continueth in supplications and prayers night and day. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth, and these things give in charge that they may be blameless. But if any provide not for his own, especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Let not a widow be taken into the number under three score years old. Okay, so it's talking about widows throughout. It's talking about the church, and it's talking about those who, all right, there's a widow. They have, if any widow have children or nephews, the children and nephews are to take care of the widow. But so is the church. And it's talking about the church and for the offspring and nephews of the widow when they do not provide for his own especially for those of his own house but the church it's saying is supposed to honor widows that are widows indeed but if they have children or nephews then they're supposed to take care of them all right so don't let anybody lay this verse at your feet you know if you're without work and make you you know feel bad you're doing the work of the lord right Let's see. You're doing the work of the Lord. Now it says, even in this chapter, I believe, about muzzling the ox that treadeth out the corn. Is it in this chapter or is it in the other one that I was... That's in this one. Uh, let's see. See, actually, because the church is supposed to take care of those that are doing the work of the Lord. All right, I can't find it. Listen to the chapter, and I'll do so myself again. All right, there it is. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. So if somebody's doing the work of the Lord, the church 
is under duty of the Lord to take care of those people. They're not idle. They're not busybodies. Like it says, that's funny because it says the widows, um, the younger widows, it says that you're not supposed to, uh, where's that one? Younger widows refuse. You don't help those because they're still young. They can get themselves a wife. They will marry. Um, and they should, you know, if that's what the Lord would have them do. If they don't, they learn to be idle. You know, the church takes care of them. They just wander about from house to house. Not only idle, but tattlers, also busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. Let me show you a parallel passage of this whole thing here in Second Thessalonians. And this is also another misquoted scripture that folks use to get after people who they think need to have a job. You realize that Jesus in the Bible says nowhere at all that someone needs to hold a job. The scripture does talk about servants and those that work under the authority of someone. So, you know, you can have yourself be a servant under the power of man, which is okay, but nothing that says, you know, you got to make a certain wage. You know, Jesus said, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, what you shall put on. Can you imagine if Christians held to that promise and said, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things, even before ye ask him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Can you imagine if there was a bunch of Christian believers that would, that would go about doing the work of God, taking no person or script with them? We had an army of those people, and how much work for the Lord could be done? But here we go, anyways. Let's read this. Uh, withdraw yourself from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which he received of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Labored night and day, what? Going out and, you know, threshing the wheat? Filling the barns full of hay? Nope. Doing the work of the Lord. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. For we, even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. So once again, it's not talking about, you know, hoeing the corn, hoeing the ground, harvesting the corn, throwing the bales up in the barn. Doing the work of the Lord. For we hear that there are some which walk dis among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. These are those who come into the church to take advantage of a free meal. Now them that are such we command and exhort by the Lord Jesus Christ that they with, that, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. It's talking about the work of the Lord here. So don't let anybody use this, this verse against you either. That any man of you would not work, neither should he eat. Yeah, if you're not working for the Lord, nor carrying on a, a job, then, yeah, that's true. But you're working for the Lord? What does it say once again in First Timothy? Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, doing the work of the Lord. No, I done lost it again. <laughs> the labor is worthy of his reward. Speaking about the elders and the people in the church.